This would be unique in the world, this particular vessel, absolutely a one-off. With its own helipad and hovercraft, this vessel is a luxury few could dream of. Roughly the size of an Olympic swimming pool, this is actually the shadow boat of a much bigger beast. It will follow and shadow the larger super yacht we're building for the client. It's an 84 metre trimaran. Both vessels are owned by a very private billionaire businessman in Singapore. Still under construction here in Perth, the super yacht will be the largest of its kind in the world. Almost the length of a soccer field, 20 metres wide and five storeys tall. The sheer volume of this thing is going to blow people away. The super yacht's still about 12 months from completion, but after two long years, its shadow boat is now in the water and ready to go. This has probably been one of the biggest challenges of my whole career. The complex techniques used to build the catamaran have never before been used on this scale in Australia. This is the largest vacuum-infused fibreglass vessel ever built in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's quite an achievement for our team. It took a crew of 300 to create the final product, many learning skills as they went. We had a, a, a few testing um, and things, a couple of failures and, and many successes, but we got there in the end. And now, look at it. Named Charlie, this catamaran will act as a floating storage unit for the super yacht. If you try and put this amount of kit that this vessel can carry on to the larger super yacht, it blows the size of the vessel out for a start and it also blows the cost out. So Mark, this is where all the toys are kept. What have we got? Indeed, we've got a hovercraft here, a landing barge here, a little um, jet powered ski here or rib here. This is just your, your general overall rib and then four jet skis yet to come here. A little bit of everything. Indeed, absolutely everything you'd ever need. Getting everything into the water is easy when you've got two fixed cranes to do your heavy lifting. Hanging off the back of the shadow, the bit, a 12 metre catamaran. And that um, will be used for diving and, uh, and exploring. It's got a big sonar on it to go and look for underwater wrecks. This may be just a storage unit, but the inside is better than most people's houses. I think it's a very relaxed sort of layout and uh, very comfortable. There's a total of 40 beds spread between 18 cabins, each with their own ensuite. A main living room and kitchen, laundry, gym, two baby grand pianos, even a decompression chamber. Outside, a barbecue and bar area beneath the helipad. On top of all of that, a second living area for the 12 crew who live and work on the boat full time. Captain Geoffrey C has worked for the owner for almost five years. For him, driving Charlie is an upgrade. The last one we are on is a little bit more simple. Uh, with, now with all this new technology, uh, there's a lot to learn. This week, Charlie and its crew will begin their journey home to Singapore. We carry 60,000 litres of fuel, um, so we'll almost get to Singapore on that at, um, at 15 knots, but we will stop in Bali just to top up. This magnificent floating mansion will never be chartered, reserved purely for the family that built it. And if you're wondering how much it costs, well, put it this way. You'd have to sell your house and dog just to be able to afford the toys it carries. It's really, really amazing.